Yeah, the, the, the imperialist propaganda that has worked against Iranians themselves is really shocking. When you, because I mean, I've been to Iran, I understand the dynamic there, especially having experience in the Middle East. Like, you really see how the colonialism of the American and Israeli Zionist regime working together really, like, it's, it's so obvious their game against Iran. And to find intelligent, educated Iranian people who just think that their government, like, even, like, to think that even the, you know, for, let's, I mean, the thing they love talking about is the, you know, head covering of women. So even that is just, you can see, just stepping back as a third party, you can see exactly why that exists. It's because it comes out of a part of opposing imperialism. Like, they had to have religion as the only thing that they they it was it was the cover so that their their political protests wouldn't be infiltrated because they could meet in the mosques and oppose the U, the U.S. and British uh, uh, dictator that it was imposed in Iran and the resistance had to meet in the mosque they had to have a, a extra political co cohesive force and that was religion so like for people to just who live there and are intelligent and they understand the history, it's just shocking. And I guess it's because everyone relates to the, uh, the money or the businesses or the, the grift, the, the corruption that existed in the imperialist dictatorships that were imposed there. I, I don't know. It's very confusing to me, but I, I would love to hear you uh, talk about that since you're, uh, also coming from a another country in Iran, like what? How do you? And I, I assume you have Iranians in your neighborhood, like, and you find people who are who are against the the Islamic uh, Republic or against uh, or, or pro like BBC Persia. They they see that as a guiding light, as in as if the BBC was anything but propaganda. Like, how how do you? How do you relate to that? Like, how, what's, how do you view that? Is there a way? Is there a way to talk to those kind of people and and try and show them that they are yeah. humans? I and yeah. we have to to talk with them like humans, and to and we have to try to know what they're they're feeling, what they want for their own lives, and we have to help them. Okay, because the people that I bring brainwashed, they are suffering. Mm. This is the main issue. But in in my neighborhood and my city, do the 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 distance or between Iran and Argentina. Okay, I, I just uh, I said before, um, thirty thousand kilometers. There's few Iranians here, okay. very few. Okay, for this reason, there is not a, a lot of uh, connections with them here. But uh, unfortunately, in Argentina, the Israeli Israeli lobby is really That's big. True. Yeah, it's really powerful here in Argentina. They are yeah. they are into the politics, the economics, and the information. For this reason, um, our big deal here in Argentina. Is to is to face the anti-Iran propaganda between the own Argentinians and show them that Iran is not the country that is being uh, introduced to the Argentinian society. This is uh, our big deal here, Argentina. Not the Iranian diaspora, because right, there is no one here. Yeah, well, the, and Israeli propaganda is far more destructive in how. Yes, it, and how it's it gets... it's important to know that uh, that the Iranians who are um, activists against their own country in Europe and North America are very few. They are not a lot that they're showing. Yeah, here it's almost very hard the, to find. The, yes, the, 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 almost the immigrants, the 
that are living there uh, are people who are seeking um, another uh, le uh, level for their own lives, are migrants, just that. Mm. Looking for job, looking for university, um, like the other ones. The people who are uh, in activity against Iran for a change regime are very, very few. And it's no as important to know that. They're very, very few. Yeah, that's the same and, with a lot weak, of the... And weak. Yeah, they're weak. Yeah. Do you know why they're very angry with the, um, with the um, atomic... Um, how do you say that? Excuse the me. Weapons program? The, the yes, weapons program? yes. Uh, <laughs> the treaty, okay? between Iran and, and Europe, because the JCPOA. finally, yes, oh, JCPOA. yes, yeah, that's really and, right. and because uh, if uh, that is been, uh, is uh, uh, finally signed up, there is no budget for them, mm. for the anti-Iran activities. And oh, that's people, interesting, so you have to like, maintain it. Yes, people like Masi Alinejad, uh, they, uh, they 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 convert an an employee. That's fascinating. It's like the it's like the Democratic Party here and abortion. They have to always keep abortion. They can't solve the problem. They always have to keep it as a problem because otherwise they won't be able to agitate their base to get people to vote for the Democrats. That's the same idea. Like if you if you sign the JCPOA, you no longer have a reason for existence. You're you're Yes, meaning of life goes away. Wow, that's that's interesting. I never thought about that. I mean, I yeah, would like to think that's totally true because that means the JCPOA actually solves the problem. But I don't know. I don't. I think it might be also like a two-state yes, solution. Yes, and, and this treaty is uh, is also against Iran. Just one thing: uh, many people doesn't like me for say say that. Why uh, um, United States of America, China, Russia, and Israel, and other countries, they have the right to have atomic weapons and Iran not? There is no answer for that. There is no answer for that. They all yeah. signed yes, the agreement. Yes, I know. Right? I know. Um, do the, the religion Iran's don't accept the the atomic weapons and mm. i i accept that okay i don't um i don't i don't want to 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 make it trouble with that it's okay but why the another uh, some countries have the right to destroy the humanity and iran not well, it's even more legalistic than that. They they signed the the nuclear non-proliferation treaty. Yes, the only exactly. country that didn't is Israel, and they have a, well over a hundred nuclear weapons that are. I mean, it's almost it's almost completely like open. Like it's just been leaked so many times that we know they're. I think it's like 120 something was the last estimate, and they have tons of nuclear weapons that they stole from America. The secrets like. Like there were American politicians that were complicit in allowing Israel to steal that technology, and, and it's then, very, it's very wow. in, in interesting that the the country that used the 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 nuclear weapons against Japan, yeah, are, exactly, are, we're the big are boss. Make a problem exactly to, <laughs> to the north yeah. for make the same thing. For <laughs> Makes the, no for sense. The same. Yeah, yeah, you have you have the only regime in the world that has actually used atomic bombs uh, on another nation, and then uh, the only, I mean, among those with uh, nuclear technology, uh, the only regime that has never wanted to sign the the non-proliferation uh, treaty, yes. uh, saying that Iran is a threat. And right. it's funny yeah. that uh, the. Um, like uh, both Imam Khomeini and Ayatollah Khomeini issued a fatwa saying, uh, I mean, that's the fa the fatwa is very famous that nuclear weapons or just any unconventional uh, weapons are 
uh, totally haram or forbidden, but nobody wants to talk about that fatwa because that's not their favorite. We fatwa. only believe fatwas against writers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Salman Rushdie's fatwa is the only fatwa that ever has any validity. All the other fatwas are garbage. That's what America yeah. says. <laughs> all the fatwas are garbage. <laughs> Because like they, they talk all the time, oh, oh, there's a fatwa against Salman Rushdie, fatwa, fatwa. And then it's like, okay, but there's also a fatwa against nuclear weapons. So, uh, you know, you know, if you're consistent, <laughs> you would say, oh, well, there's a fatwa against Salman Rushdie. That's a bad thing. There's a fatwa against nuclear weapons. That means Iran doesn't pose a threat to develop nuclear weapons. If you believe fatwa means anything, you have to be consistent. But there's zero consistency and every day in this world increasingly less consistency on anything uh, any messaging out there so it's uh, just one of those things that the general public who don't look deeply into this stuff it just goes right over their head they just don't see the 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 lies uh that <laughs> that are happening yeah. but it is funny when you think about it uh, by the way have we heard of Salman Rushdie is he still alive <laughs> Yeah, they, he yeah, totally the dropped question. off the media. Yeah, nobody knows even if he was uh, bitten, beaten, what by a knife or just a fist, and how many scars he got or anything. Like it's they said that he's going to lose his sight, but he's absolutely I okay. Mean, it's unbelievable. The stories were like a guy jumped up and like stabbed him to death with a knife. There's there's no photos of puddles of blood or anything. There's not. If, you, if you've ever seen a stabbing, that is a disgusting scene. This is, there was nothing like that. There was like one tiny little bit of blood on a couch. So I don't know. It was really, it's a really weird story. I don't really get it. It came out exactly at the same time or three days after Bolton uh, got, uh, got, got Blame threatened that. by Iran. And then within the last couple of weeks, it's been, Non-stop news about Iran doing bad stuff in America. Like, Iran hacked some computer network. Iran did this. Iran did that. If you just look through this, the idiot news, like, it's all just Iran did this, that. And there's no there's no evidence. It's just so, I, I don't know. It just seems like this whole last month has been full of these anti-Iranian stories. So there must be an agenda. And my assumption is the agenda is to prevent JCPOA from happening. Yeah, that's what know. a lot of... I hear from a few other um, people like analyzing the situation, but it probably has had something to do with it because I mean, we are living uh, during a time when everybody has phones and they are recording everything like uh, literally just walking on the street and recording everything. But this famous writer was uh, delivered, was going to deliver a speech and no camera, absolutely no camera at the scene. How is that possible? Like nobody in the audience wants, wanted to record or like there was no camera in the, um, I don't know, the hall or where they was, he was uh, ready to deliver a speech. How is that possible? It's a good point. I mean, there was people in the audience, you know, you would expect, yeah, I don't know. It's a fishy story. All I have to say is there's so strange, much fishiness. It's strange things. It's strange things. Exactly. Very strange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got. Uh, it's. I mean, I would say when you see five different stories about Iran within a week, and then there was no stories before that about Iran. They, these stories aren't connected. They're like cobbled together nonsense. And and I mean, we haven't heard anything from the guy who did the attack on Salman Rushdie. We don't know. Like, I mean, it's it's fishy. That's all I say. Is it's a fishy story. I I don't know. Yeah, it's fishy. It's true. I mean, it's a fatwa of how many years? Nobody cares about this anymore. Like, literally, I don't think any. That was 33 years ago. Yes. Was, um, was a forgotten history. Exactly. And it's nobody, just... like, nobody in Iran is, I mean, it's not something that we're talking about or thinking about all the time. That was yes, 33. And... It's gone. <laughs> yeah. And who has read? this fucking book <laughs> <laughs> i tried to read it it's under it's just boring it's not an interesting yes story. I, I am into i am into the the world of literature i don't know anyone who reads this book 
it's not interesting. I tried. It's yeah, just, yeah. Uh, you, and also, Leo, yeah. uh, and also, there is an, another um, blasphemic or anti-Iran, anti-Islam uh, books that are being read a lot. For example, that Persepolis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's being read still today, but uh, the, the 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 book of uh, Salman Rushdie is not being read. I mean, there's the 9-11 Commission Report. That's about the biggest anti-Islamic book that's ever been written. I mean, there's all kinds of... America produces nonstop anti-Muslim political literature. So, like, if you wanted a fatwa, you should have a fatwa against the 9-11 Commission Report or something like that. I mean, where you're trying to demonize an entire... I don't know. Like, like I, it's just... The, you know, the war on terror, is that not, I mean, there's so much horrible anti-actual, like deadly political literature that kills Muslims. And then there's also a whole bunch of just nonsense, idiot literature that's anti-Muslim. You know, the, there's the whole like KKK adjacent crazy people who do a lot of stuff. There's no fatwas against them. So it is a little bit bizarre that this goofball's uh, like book, which I don't, I mean, I don't know why liberals worship Salman Rushdie that much. It doesn't seem like he ever created anything that was that interesting to me personally. Uh, but uh, he, yeah, this book somehow became a a wedge issue because I guess it was one of the first widely circulated books that talked about and sort of the the prophet in that way. I don't I don't quite get it, but it is a very strange phenomenon in general uh yeah, that's yeah. True. i wish there was a fatwa against the against american american uh demonization of islam that would be much better use of fatwas <laughs> yeah well that that fatwa was 33 years ago we didn't yeah. have yeah yet and we didn't have uh social media and everything yet so Yes, and for example, there is a, um, another big and important fatwa is that is the the fatwa of war against ISIS. Exactly. Okay. Um, saying it, saying it up by Ayatollah Sistani that right. uh, the, good, the the the, the, the consequence was that a thousand people from India, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, Syria, Iraq. Uh, many other countries take their their um, their tools um, and their their weapons to fight against ISIS and Daesh ISIS ISIL uh, is not more an uh, an a danger for humanity. Okay, yeah. thanks that fatwa, but no one's talk about that. Yeah, exactly. Nobody yeah. even talks about like how many Muslims have given their lives to fight against terrorism and terrorists. That's yeah, that for point. example, here in, 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 in Argentina, as a Christian country, the, um, the idea, the conclusion is that the Muslim made a genocide against Christians in Iraq and Iran and in, in Iraq and Syria. Wow. But we know that indeed the 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 most killed by ISIS, Daesh, was were Muslims, and mm -hmm. indeed were the Muslims that came to help Christians exactly. in Syria and Iraq. Just one example, okay? And for example. The, um, they just talk about the um, the um, the the role of Russia against Daesh ISIS, but anybody talks about the big role that Iran yeah. and the Shia armies in the zone ha uh, have uh, has in 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 the fight. With ISIS, they, well, I think they, once they, you say that they had gotta, a big role. Yeah, well, once you talk about Iran's role fighting ISIS, then it questions America's role because is America actually fighting ISIS with Iran? 
Or is America the one that's puppeteering ISIS to make uh, little, you know, battles wherever it goes? And I think you, you know, it's sadly the um, not everyone. The answer, the answer is, is is the kill of of Qasem Soleimani. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, that's true. That's the biggest uh, evidence. The biggest, um, yes, of, answer. Uh, but for our is clear. But in Argentina, these issues are not clear. This conclusion that is very, uh, it's well known um, for everyone. Here in my country, it's not clear. For yeah, example. I'm yeah, I'm probably okay. in many parts of the world. Yes, uh, for, for this reason, uh, I said that the big deal that we have here in Argentina is, 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 to, is to talk about these issues. Yeah, that's true. That's the only way to fight uh, the propaganda. And it's the Israel, it's the Israel lobby here in America. So it's the Israel, whatever it is in Argentina, the the Zionist-backed narrative that is the toxic uh, part of that equation. I, I'm. Uh, I don't know if you know Max Blumenthal. He wrote this book called The Management of Savagery, which exposed the U.S.'s role in funding the terror groups in Syria. This is a really amazing book. And uh, he tried to do a book talk uh, in D.C. on that book. And the the Zionists came out. It's the same same exact group that would protest if you were talking about, like, killing babies in Gaza and how bad that is. They would come protest your talk about that because they their, their whole shtick is to protect everything Israel, no matter how bad it is. And it's the same energetic group of, I don't know, I don't know what you call them, trolls or just bad people who, uh, who come rush. out. And, yeah, they shut down the whole bookshop. They said the bookshop, they threatened oh. the bookshop, said the bookshop had to close because they thought it would be attacked. So, uh, so yeah. This is why this himself... Uh... From the Jewish community, so imagine if that was someone. Uh, yeah, he's like, he's Jewish. Like, yeah, I mean, if yeah, no kidding. Like, uh, if you flip the tables on that, it would be really yeah. If it, was, if it weren't Jewish people, it, I don't know. I don't think I. I think still, if I think he's fair game. I think I think anyone could attack him and doesn't. They're never gonna bring out him being uh, Jew. Jewish to protect him. No, because the. He's on the side of the, you know, when you when you switch against, when you become an anti-imperialist, you are, you open yourself up to those attacks, and you can no longer really claim the same protective. You can't, you don't have the same protection even in your ethnicity. You can see that with a lot of categories. But yeah, so that's interesting to 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 see that in Argentina. Argentina, you're also struggling with the with it's the really, destructive, yeah, destructive effects of that of that agenda. It's really it's hard to. I've been, you know, doing protests here before, you know, to help spread the ideas about Palestine and what Palestine is, because it's very similar to Iran in terms of, in it, as an American, in terms of trying to relate to people about it, because Palestinian is synonymous with terrorist in America. So, and Iran is very close to that. So even when talking with people, you know, about... Yes, but about, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same, but it's... Yes, in for America's, example, uh, in many... <clears throat> uh, uh, at, um, atmospheres, um, groups of <clears throat> excuse me, or groups of people. It's okay to be pro-Palestine, but it's not okay to be pro-Iran, for example. Interesting. Like, what? How would yeah, you? Yeah. Where have you seen that? That's an interesting. Difference. Because, um, for example, in Palestine, it uh, it's been it's been considered a weak country. Without um, without options, but Iran is considered to to a, a country, a powerful country that they can, um, you know, make things okay. 
mm. they have more uh, agency. It, yes, it yes, it, it, it's a it's a powerful are... country in the in the area. Yeah, Palestinians are in in among uh, a lot of groups. They're seen as like victims of Israeli aggression, yes. so they get more support. But Iran and the Iranian government uh, do not. I mean, people usually don't see the Iranian government as a victim. Yes, or a yes victim, so. exactly. And in a very particular way, exactly, I'm I'm talking about, for example, the left wing here in in, yeah. in South right. America. Okay, they are fetish, fetish, um, fetish, fetish, yes, the the Palestine culture. Okay, because they are victims. Yeah, that's a good Just point. That. I, th- yeah. For example, yes, I'm pro Palestina, but I'm not pro resistance. Okay, when Palestine can attack <laughs> the Israelis, exactly. no, this the oh this is God. violence. We don't agree right. with that. Right. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I I I think you're right about the fetishization of of Palestine is really an important part because once you fetishize something, you can you can disempower it it doesn't have the same power anymore because you can use it as a token and it doesn't uh, they do that with they did that with racism for sure but like yes. uh, the left has definitely done that with palestine because the you'll left see wing, the left wing the 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 democratic democratic left wing in in south america they think that the in, in a democratic way israel and palestina can can reach a deal <laughs> yeah, like a two-state rule. Uh, the yeah, two-state two lie. Yeah, and okay. well, yeah. When we are facing a genocide. Right, right. Uh, and just, an, an, apartheid, the... an apartheid system and a genocide. Exactly. It's just that. In, and there is no democracy at this level. Right. Yeah, it's a, token, it's a token issue here. You, you see people like uh, AOC... She ran all on that, and then she leaves it in the dust, and and nobody nobody asks for any political follow up, and and uh, yeah, two state solution is the best you get when whenever you. If, but if you ever live there, you know it's a two state solution now. Like it's exactly that right now. There's two there, and it doesn't work and because it's not a the one, yeah, it's not a solution because <laughs> the one state can just constantly steal land and everything from the other state and. The other mm-hmm. state's never going to be allowed to have a military or defend itself, and so is that actually statehood? You could also ask that question. Uh, so, yeah, it's such a joke, but 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 that is true. Is uh, Iran hasn't there? It hasn't been fetishized. There's no. It hasn't been disempowered like that. Like like there has to be principles, and I think there's. I'm slowly starting to learn this just as a human. Like there are people. Who they seem to have principles when you relate to them, but they're actually not running on principled thought. Like, and that doesn't disturb them. To me, it's very disturbing when, and I'm not saying like everyone has to be perfect. I'm just saying when you rationalize something, you have to start from like a principled stance and then see if people are actually violating their own principles in order to understand how things are working. And in 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 the Palestine situation, I mean the activism has no principles anymore like they're not anti-imperialism when i approach it like i approach it like i think everyone should have like the land that they shouldn't have things stolen from them they shouldn't be occupied they shouldn't be that shouldn't be something that's okay uh and and the same activists are now very very okay with the syrian war they think bashar bashar al-sad is a butcher they think putin is a butcher for like Defending the I remember, the Eastern yes, Ukraine. I remember. Yes, I like, yes, yes. why? Yeah, so there's no yeah. positioning. Yeah. They are uh, against Bashar al-Assad. They are with Ukraine and they are with uh, Palestine. Two states. <laughs> yeah, the two yeah. states. <laughs> and there is no contradictions. There is no contradiction. How? Between. It drives no. me nuts. Like... I, like, <laughs> is it ignorance? Do you think, well, let's see, in Argentina, do you think it's people who aren't reading, like they don't actually understand that Ukraine existed between 2014 and 2022? Like, did, was, did, did they not know anything that happened in the last eight years? Or In Argentina, the, the, the yeah. most people support Ukraine. Ukraine. And it's because they, 
how do they feel about that? Like, what is it because Putin is a butcher or Putin is a? Like, I don't yes. even understand how no, no, South America um, even. Oh, yeah, okay. The, ahead, and now, excuse me. The um, the media and propaganda shows uh, Putin like a dictatorship who who is a new Hitler, and <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my he's uh, taking okay. over uh, Ukraine. It's with He's no ideas hit. about that. Like yes. New... Yes, really. And it's a, it's a really in, in interesting that the Azov Battalion is a neo-Nazi um, militia and uh, the entire uh, uh, Israeli lobby here in Argentina are, are, are supporting the Battalion exactly. Azov and, and, the, and the Ukraine regime. Yeah, and okay. that, the, the gray zone called that out like years before this happened, this war, like two years ago, there were, we were there were uh, articles in the gray zone, uh, which were calling out the Israeli support of Nazis in Ukraine. And it was just like jaw dropping. Like, how is this happening? And yeah. even after the war, nobody's talking about it. It's just it's one of the most bizarre things ever. You have Nazi supposed like. Israelis are supposed to be against Nazis, right? Because their whole narrative is that they were set up there as a way of getting away from Nazis, and Nazis are supposed to kill Jews. So there's this whole story, which is pretty yes, well the, rehearsed in the West. The Simon, and, the Simon uh, Weisenthal Center. Yeah, Weisenthal, yeah. Yes, um, <laughs> said nothing about the Azov Battalion. <laughs> <laughs> what? Really, really interesting, and they have the the entire uh, neo Nazi ideology. The, the no, no, they're not neo Nazis. They're not neo Nazis though. They are Nazis. That's the thing people don't understand. Like Ukraine in the war in World War II were Nazi. Like that's where real Nazis came from. In America, they're neo Nazis because they're people who like looked at Nazis and then regenerated Nazi culture in America. But these people in Ukraine came there from Nazi, like their great grandfather, their grandfathers were Nazis. Like this is this is a yes, direct but, lineage. Yes, but the, there is just one thing that the the Third Reich uh, has taken has taken Ukraine. True. Okay? Yeah. 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 That's uh, true. Yeah. Yes, was not a part of the Third Reich. Right. Okay? It has yeah. been taken. Like uh, Denmark, Norway, and many uh, lands of Europe. Okay. Right. Of course, there the, the, um, there was groups uh, that collaborated with the Nazi occupation of Ukraine, like but yeah. yes, but um, was not a part of the Third Reich. This is a main issue to, but so we saw. Whatever. Anyway, the ass of battalion are neo pagans. Are pagans? They are racist yeah. and and they are um, make a lot of crimes. Okay, with the green flag, with with the green uh, light of uh, of the West. Um, honestly, in this issue, I'm uh, no, I'm not that. I am with Russia. Okay. Yeah, I, totally. I'm with I'm Russia too. because it's yeah. this is 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 the is the first time after the um, after the Berlin Wall, okay, the Berlin Wall, that um, the the power of NATO has been attacked by another one, okay. Mm, yeah. That NATO is being questioned and weakened and confronted. Yes. That makes yes. Sense. Yes. NATO is being faced. Yeah. Uh, before that, NATO was uh, in, in a spatial program. Okay. But oh. today, today they are facing um, another reality of the world. Yeah, it, it it definitely makes them do new things. They they may continue to expand, but I don't know. I mean, now that they have the new like what Finland and whatever, I I don't know how that's going to go anywhere positive. But I I I hope some people's at least call into question whether we should have this confrontational relationship with Russia. It just doesn't make any sense. Russia 
they say Russia t- was aggressive in this, but it's absolutely not aggressive. It is defensive. No, not in, as, in, in a absolute way, because the um, uh, the military aircraft of Russia are, are not bombing Ukraine that they can yeah. do. Like, look at what America did to Iraq. I mean, that is a totally different style of warfare than what Russia is doing now. I mean, the U.S. just obliterated whole chunks. And I mean, look at Dresden. I mean, you want to look at like real warfare. If you want to destroy something, it's absurd to call Russia like, a, uh, I don't know, imperialist power there. I just, if it happened yes, in Mexico. As, as would... Alexander Dugin said, with uh, um, our our war is in Ukraine, but not against Ukraine. Yeah, that's a good way this to say is the, it. Yeah. This is the issue. Yeah. Our war is in Ukraine. But not, not against. against Ukraine. Do you think this war in, in Ukraine, because I, I, I think it seemed, it smelled a bit fishy to me in the beginning, because we went from this COVID thing, which was driving us nuts for two years. For those of us who care to read scientific papers, it made no sense and still doesn't. And people still haven't admitted that it made any, I mean, the vaccines don't work. You take a vaccine three times, you're going to get COVID three times. Doesn't make any sense. So it, like, you have to be a special kind of hypnotized to still believe that it was a real thing. And anyway, it goes from that to Ukraine like that, the ban. People stopped talking about COVID. Now they're talking about Putin. And to me, that's really strikes of like, of a, of a, like a mind control, media control phenomena where they're trying to keep people hypnotized into an agenda. And I assume you agree with that. And if not, comment. But my main question is, do you think the Ukraine situation is going to achieve a similar situation that COVID is in this kind of great reset new normal agenda? I assume you followed that and you kind of understand what that idea is, is to like reset the, the global financial system. And so this Ukraine thing is now setting us up for food crisis, or at least a good excuse for food crisis, because they can say, oh, mm. yeah. And so now they can start put and, and fuel crisis and food and fuel are the two cornerstones of how population can remain re- yes. under your control. Like if you have a, and it's Europe important now, to know, it's important yeah. to know that Argentina and Ukraine are two areas that uh, the main food of of the entire world are being are being sold. Okay, the production of of food is here, Argentina and Ukraine. For this reason, could be really? a good. Yes. Wow, I didn't be, know that about uh, uh, Yes, could be um an an excuse to huh. to. To get into the food crisis in the world could be an, a, an issue. What is what does Argentina export other than apples? I was just at the store today and I saw some Argentinian apples, so I know they export apples. But what, what, <laughs> what's the other? What are the other main exports? Because that is really fascinating. Now they're trying to scramble Argentinian political system. I can yes. that I think you're soya, right. Soya and meat. Oh. Oh, okay, and meat, the, yeah, meat, the, of course, yeah, meat. The, yeah, the meat, the, the best meat of the world is, uh, comes from Argentina. And you're not okay, starting factories that, that for, like, bug the, meat? The meat who has a, a lot of protein. Yeah, right, no, I know. Argentinian beef here is very well known. There's a, a number <laughs> of, yeah, no, yeah. We know, yeah, we know Argentinian beef in America, that's for sure. That, so, like, you don't see any uh, new future in, like, bug burgers? Like, you know? There's no factories where Argentina is trying to. Bill Gates hasn't bought up uh, like factories in Buenos Aires to make uh, burgers out of cockroaches or whatever he's doing in other <laughs> countries. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad to hear that. It gives me <laughs> hope for the future. Yes. Um, it's, it's important to know that another issue is, is the obesity in the war. Okay. The, the the quality of uh, of food it's it's going down and that means more sugar and more fat yeah In, we have to take control about that 
in uh, in Iran, for example, in Iran, for many years, uh, almost wasn't obesity, but it's 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 growing up. Yeah, and the two years of uh, lockdown when the schools were closed and need uh, a lot of children start start having problems oh, with yes people. obesity high problems because they had to they attended schools on their you know yes. like parents phone or their and um, no sports no sports exactly no exercise but yeah, it's no for exercise. your health it's for so, your health to stay locked in isn't it for your health <laughs> doesn't it make you healthy to stay uh, locked yeah. in on a zoom call yeah <laughs> You wouldn't catch the virus, but you would uh, definitely come up with uh, a lot of other problems. Yeah, that's true. You could just... Eye problems. Yeah, I, I think... mean, they're showing now that lockdowns were absolutely atrocious. There's a lot of evidence coming out right now showing that lockdowns were far more dangerous than anything we could have done with uh, any virus. So we didn't a... actually have uh, like very severe lockdowns. We did. We had schools closed uh, for a long time but we didn't really have uh, like the strict lockdowns that a lot of countries had but still it affected many children yeah yes. it's dangerous i mean and covering the mouths of children when they're trying to learn how to understand emotion and language is extremely detrimental and with a cloth a piece of cloth that doesn't even block i mean yes. It's like the microbiology, the ignorance of people in terms of the world around them and physical things is really shocking because you can't stop viruses yes, with a yes, piece of the, material. It's so the stupid. The lockdown made a, a big damage. A big yeah. damage. Yes. Yes. For, in Argentina, for how was it there? How? What was the? I know you guys locked down really hard. From my friends told me that, but. I, do you, are yes. there people studying the effects or are there people is there scientific reports coming out saying how how it affected people or um not yet but okay. uh, was a, a hard lockdown almost for four months oh, um yeah. the issue takes uh, more than than a year many people yeah. are still are crazy with the, is this issue like the mask or um it's traumatizing like i i don't i i speak yes. flippantly flippantly about it like i speak like but i it's really just i'm not i'm i have no negative feelings against people who were affected because yes i have great feelings about the politicians who knew they were doing wrong and the scientists who backed them the they're evil but like the people were remember very traumatized. that remember that the fear is death yeah exactly the fear is the death stress stress is okay. deadly yes it's, it's, exactly exactly and they know about that yeah the media they do. the media the the hospitals the doctors they know exactly how to how to kill us in an indirect form yeah okay for this reason, for this reason, um, I don't believe in the exactly in the um, in the discourse of the pandemic and you know about that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there is a virus. The, there is a danger, but they kill us. They kill a lot of people with the fear. I, I and this is agree with uh, and this yeah. is in, uh, unforgiven. This yeah, is unforgiven. I agree. It's, it can't be forgiven. And yet people are doing it here. People are forgiving. And it's just, uh, uh, it's so frustrating. I mean, especially having lived through things like 9-11, where I was like also very evidently state crimes and lies involved in that. And it's just people just walk right through it and then they get to continue their lives. And I think that's what's going to happen with COVID. I think people are just going to, you know, I mean, Fauci is going to be like Dick Cheney. Like Dick Cheney is like an ordinary guy now. People just respect him, and he has like a big mansion and lives a normal life. And he murdered millions of people. Like, and in my opinion, Americans as well. Uh, in uh, you know, by uh, participating in that in that event. So I I think, sadly, we aren't going to feel any kind of 
justice from that uh, no. which which i it's that's going to be the most painful part of the experience is just seeing how these exactly. people get away with exactly. their crime i agree exactly but we've been recording for almost two hours wow wow you're an interesting okay. guy we should definitely <laughs> hang out more really <laughs> really <laughs> no. wow. Minutes recording. Uh, we we had some minutes. We chit chatted for about ten minutes, I think, before we started. Yes. <laughs> really, but two that's... hours, Cetere? <laughs> yeah, one hour forty nine minutes. So. Oh my god! Oh my god! Asamotavajena, asamotavajena, shudamo dosuati budo. Need to get a little Farsi in there. <laughs> yes, dear Chris, when will you start to to learn Farsi, Persian? Well, that's a good question. I really want to do that. I part of me, I need to have I need to be I need to visit Iran or Tajikistan, I guess, and stay there for a while. I need to do something that gets me into a Farsi speaking environment. This is the problem when you think about Tajikistan as an option. <laughs> yeah, we should go. Yes. Well, Tajikistan I have to because there's no visa. Like if you yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say? No, excuse me. At Tajikistan, uh, they have any problems with the United States of America, but there is a problem right now that the main way to go from the United States of America is Russia. Yeah. Um, but I think through Japan or Korea, you go, it, uh, yes. You can go by Turkey. Turkey has a really good transit hub in Istanbul, so you can, you can oh, fly nice. to Tajikistan from Turkey, so. Yeah. Yes. But also, you know, to Iran, and I, I, I wish it was possible <laughs> to go to Iran. It's so Setele, much, uh... Uh, um, have you ever been in in Tajikistan? No, unfortunately, I have. Armenia, Armenia. Turkey? I have Armenia, Turkey, yes. But one of the first people Russia. we interviewed. And the Russia, I have been to yeah. Russia. One yes. one of the first people we interviewed on this podcast is living in Tajikistan. He's an American, so. He sort yeah. of inspired us. Yeah, he inspired us to go to Tajikistan. So maybe we'll do that. Do a podcast. Nice. With <clears throat> yes, it, it's, it's uh, very important for me that um, I want to I want to have the experience to be in in this Persian speaker country that not be Iran. Yeah, that would be very. Different. Yes, but because uh, there is a lot of similarities, of course between yeah. Iranians and Tajiks, but also there is differences in the society, in the country, the history of the country. Look at that, the the, um, the flag of Tajikistan has the crown of Samanid Empire. Hmm. The Samanid Empire. Sam, Saman, Sam, Samanian, okay? Um, yeah. It's a big symbol. Because they they are showing that the empire that they have the the mirage are the Samanids who were Sunnis, Sunni Muslims. Okay, in Tajikistan nowadays there are also also <clears throat> uh, Sunnis, but uh, instead of that, Iran it's uh, it's the heritage of uh, Safavid Empire. Okay. Unfortunately, many uh, uh, many people in Iran, in own Iran, they don't want they don't want to to see that. Uh, also, the clergyman on on uh, Rouhani mullahs, because they 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 see the Safavid Safavid Empire like an imperialistic power and 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 a link between them and the Pahlavis. <clears throat> but it's nothing to do with that. Indeed yes. indeed yes. in 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 Safavid Empire uh, uh came Mola Sadra uh um Alamachlisi and for example Sayyid Mir Damad okay Thanks, uh, thanks them that uh, um, Ayatollah Khomeini can't made his uh, theoretical political yeah. power. That is the Velayatul Fakih, Velayatul Fakih al Okay, for this reason, 
as I um, as from my view of uh, Iranology, in an analogy point of view, the the current Iran is the um, he, uh, has the heritage the heritage of Safavid Empire, okay. But instead of that, Tajikistan has the the, the Samanids. Interesting. That's an interesting. Set, uh, Setare, what do you think about that exactly? Please tell me your opinion. About what? About the uh, what? See, no, no, not a Safavid. That the different, the difference between Iran and Tajikistan is not about the Pahlavis, the Islamic Republic, or the Soviet. Instead, that they, they are a part. They are the history. They are the, the Roman. They are the last uh, history of the Samanids, and Iranian are the last history of the Safavids. Is my theory. Right. Yeah, well, I am i don't really have uh, enough knowledge to comment on that. But yeah, I don't think it's, I mean, uh, I haven't been to Tajikistan, um, but... But didn't Benjamin comment on that? He said that, like, there's a fear in Tajikistan sort of of Iranian, sort of of the cultural imperialism, that they view it as cultural imperialism, because they view it as, like, Iranian culture may exclude Tajik culture. So like there there's maybe something something historically rooted in that that you're you're seeing. I don't think it's yeah. because of the Safavids or the Samanids. I think it's more because of the I would say I mean uh, this is just something that I guess, but I think it's again because of the propaganda that uh, exists against uh, modern day Iran. I don't think it's that historical because mm. we be part of the same country and it was just different cities and everything but um, the current view of Tajikistan's uh, or the people in Tajikistan of Iran I don't think it's um, it's unbiased probably so um, it's the same way with uh, so what the uh, you would hear people from Iraq uh, say about the fear of the influence of uh, the yes. Iranian government. They have fear of Iranian influence, but no fear of Russian influence in Tajikistan or American influence in Iraq. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I that's interesting. There probably is something historical about it too, but I don't think it's, I mean, it uh, overweighs the the propaganda that exists against Iran. Probably. Yes, yes, yeah. and the Soviet heritage in Tajikistan, okay? The, the idea that religion has, has to be a part of the social life, mm -hmm. right. I think. Hmm. I think... Uh, we better stop recording now. Well, but it's been fun. Yeah, it was a great conversation. So yes. we should definitely, definitely chat I again. Enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. You can cut it or whatever you want. And I have to, excuse me, I apologize myself in front of, uh, of you both because my English is weak, it's poor. Oh, it's great. You got a good English. You, I can tell you're from Argentina when you speak, but that's it. It's good. You're not going to get it. You won't you won't get past me telling me you don't have an accent, but other than that it's fine. <laughs> like it's perfect. I In Persian, I said. don't have accent. In <laughs> Persian, I don't have accent. Okay, so before I stop recording, like thanks everyone for tuning into another episode of Twice Told Tales podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.